But there are a lot of movies that did not survive, you know, to today that we don't remember that were terrible. And I think that's true of every era, right? It's like, does this movie stand the test of time, right? Does mm -hmm. it, can you watch it decades later and does it hold up? Because, you know, there's a lot of hype and, you know, you know, I'll look back on reviews I did of movies like 10 years ago and I'm like, why did I like that movie? You know, <laughs> so I, you, you get, you definitely get caught up in, in a lot of it. So I don't know, kind of ridiculous. Yeah. See so, uh, George A. Romero's Night Riders if you want to really get yeah. a dumb movie. <laughs> you know, it's just sort of like, look, a lot of movies are a product of their time, and then a lot of movies can transcend. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, you know, for me, Logan's Run, no one today can watch that movie and think this is the stupidest movie. They, they think it's terrible. There's this, it's in a futuristic mall with escalators and fountains. Yes, it's ridiculous. It was shot at a shopping mall in Dallas, but but I love Logan's Run for the performance uh, of you know Michael York, uh, Jenny Agutter. I mean, like mm -hmm. just the concept behind it. I think it's it's it sort of has like a a little bit of a brave new world behind it. Their 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 worldview is shattered when they discover the truth about how society is structured, and and it's it's interesting where all the music when they're in the domed cities is all mm -hmm. computer like computer music and then when they leave it's orchestral music it's a symphony yeah. you know so so uh there's some really interesting things about the movie it just doesn't hold up from a from a special effects standpoint you know the models look cheap some of the effects are pretty bad uh, but i would say that you know uh roscoe lee brown is box the robot box mm -hmm. is great and it led me to read the novel at a way too young of an age to read a novel like that um and the novel is like nothing like the movie at all they really took a lot of creative license in translating it to the big screen i think they're both equally yeah. novel by william f nolan um logan's run which is just very different you know you they you basically choose to die you get euthanized at the age of 21 mm -hmm. right because it's it's uh the the novels logan's run the original is is a reaction to the youth movement of the 1960s right that the only way to sort of reset society is just get rid of old people and that was more the concept behind it. Um, one day, I hope there'll be an adaptation of Logan's Run that's more faithful to the novel. I think it's a mm -hmm. it's a fascinating concept. But I'm just saying this as a very long winded way to make a point about movies from you know when you Other time. First, yeah, and how even like your reaction to a movie changes. Like when I first saw the Star Wars prequels, right? Like. Star Wars prequels, I was very disappointed about. Like, you know, God, I remember it was like almost a form of therapy. I get into our uh, long, long conversations with friends on the phone. This is when we used to stop, talk to each other on the phone. Yeah. Now we do this over a live stream. But like, and it was like a form of therapy. Like, what is Star Wars? And what is this? And what is George Lucas? Or like, okay, I'm going to trust George Lucas. And, you know, I, I feel like the prequels for me didn't get good until the end of episode two, when it was like, oh, okay, this is what I've been waiting to see. Like uh, a ton of Jedi fighting in an arena. That's cool. Like, and then there was only one movie to wrap it up, but the se the prequels have aged well. When you look back, the yeah. idea and, of and and with the sequels, people love the prequels so much better. Yeah, they love the, <laughs> they, they love this, the the prequels even more because in light of the sequels, and that's interesting. I mean, something we should talk about is the Jurassic Park trailer came out for the new. Okay, I haven't Jurassic seen that one yet. Yeah. Have you seen it? I haven't. I will though. You'll see it. Yeah, I will. You, I'm I'm okay. interested in seeing this movie. So you need to see it because what's great is that they reunite the trio. You know, Hold on. From, two they reunite two of them and then kill off the third one. Or? No, no, they don't do that. No, they reunite the uh, original characters. You know, Jeff Goldblum, Laura Dern, um, Sam, 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 Sam uh, Neil, uh, like from. From the first movie. Yes. They're reunited. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I saw they're, a picture of that. They're paired with Chris Pratt and the new characters that we've we've come to like. Was that so hard? Was that <laughs> so hard to get the three characters from the original Jurassic Park movies and just put them into one movie? The three. I mean, it's almost it's almost like the Jurassic Park movie is trolling the Star Wars sequels. It's, I mean, everyone wants to say that The Last Jedi is the thing that broke and destroyed Star Wars. I would argue that it was The Force Awakens and not just The Force Awakens from the opening crawl, which does not world build. 
There's so many. I mean, look, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole of, yeah. of the Star yeah, we got Wars more sequels. movies to review. Star Wars sequels uh, sucking because that's just too easy of a rabbit hole to go down. But Jesus, oh my <laughs> God, like it's just, it's just, it's just annoying as hell. So I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, wait, where's this comment yeah, here? Laura Dern, Sam Neill, Jeff Goldblum, dollars. Yeah. Could they, I mean, could they have done that for the first Star Wars sequel, The Force Awakens? They just could have put all three together. And then maybe they, they have lesser roles. You didn't even, even need to kill off those characters. You yeah. you know, there's, it's okay for a character to, to ride off into the sunset, right? For General Solo to just say, you know, I'm going to sit this one out. This is not a battle for me to fight, right? Like, mm -hmm. or whatever. But to like, I can't imagine a kid on a high from seeing Return of the Jedi and and a parent saying, well, let's watch what happens in the next movie. Yeah. And then Han Solo is killed like a fucking bitch. It sucks. And there's a video, not on the Film Threat YouTube channel, but on Film Courage, where I compare the death of Han Solo in The Force Awakens to the death of Spock in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, and how each was handled completely differently. Go watch that video on the Film Courage YouTube channel. Yeah, I'm the, talking the, about... The, I was the, just say this. Well, go ahead. No, the death of an iconic character is so important. And like the Star Wars sequels completely mishandled all of the deaths of those characters they could have even like I, I i was all hopeful like okay i'm just gonna trust that they know what they're doing luke has gone to the spirit realm to recruit other jedi from the past to to cross over into our world i thought that they, i had this 3d chess thing going in my head of a much better story for rise of skywalker than it turned out to be i mean rise of skywalker being the worst among them but the the but the original sin to me was the force awakens and from the opening crawl terrible just like and in retrospect even worse than we possibly could have imagined i mean you know jj abrams needs to be banned from science fiction films <laughs> i agree 100 percent. i think i think people would say kathleen kennedy needs to be banned from science yeah fiction. well yeah i mean look that was i mean ultimately she could have said look we got it like there are just certain things if you're gonna you know, we got to have Hans, Han, Luke, and Leia reunite in the films. Now what we're going to get is some bad Disney Plus series. And there's going to be a moment. I predict this is going to happen. They've already inserted Luke. By the way, haven't watched any of the Book of Boba. Yeah, neither have I. I watched the first 15 minutes of the first episode. And I thought, my imagination of Boba Fett's escape from the Sarlacc pit mm -hmm. is a thousand times better than what I'm watching, which looked like a freaking fan film. It was so bad. After 15 minutes, I said, I can't, I just can't watch this. I, I don't care. You are destroying my memory of the good memories I have of star Wars. And I've, I've, I've said it before. I miss loving star Wars. I used to love it and I do not. And part of it has to do with the way that um, Gina Carano was treated. I think was, yeah horrible how she was publicly humiliated and and shamed or something whoopi goldberg just said uh, there there's so many comparisons that yeah. have make no sense um so that the sort of disrespect to fans from from lucasfilm and just like on and on and on and i i don't know i just don't i just don't care anymore i just don't i don't what can I say? It yeah. it, it sucks. So so, um, so go see the Beatles. Uh, go see the Beatles. <laughs> yeah. Scott Slaughterbeck says, "Yeah, Harrison Ford's death sucked, as did the three sequels." I I I agree. Um, JJ Mack, you didn't think Harrison Ford mail it in too? Um, yeah, I'm I, just saying with Harrison Ford, like Leonard Nimoy. I I'm pretty sure they both wanted to die. They both wanted to. Their... But, you know, okay, have it happened in the first movie, but at least have, like I said in my video on Film Courage, which you can watch after this live stream. Don't watch it now. Go watch it later. Go, you can bookmark it. But, uh, but you know, like, it's not about the character dying. It's about the reaction of the other yeah. characters who love that character, that legacy character, and how they react to the death of a character. And Does can you boost sense? your story because of that death? It, imagine yeah. if Luke and Leia were present 
when Han was see, I don't think he should have died. I think he should have been mortally wounded. And then, you know, Luke shows up and it's like, you know, maybe a reversal of that line that was in Return of the Jedi. How how we doing? Same as always, you know, and he's mortally wounded. It would have been a much, it, it would have been a callback. It would have just been, just, there's a million better ways in my head that it could have gone, right? Mm-hmm. Why is it that we, why is it that, that conversation <laughs> devolved to like how Star Wars sucked? You know what I think? You know what I think? You know, we don't. Talk I know we're about talking about the Beatles. We're talking about the Beatles. About the Beatles. About How did this, where did this train go off the rail? <laughs> um, no, but it's like what it is, is I think this we don't talk a lot about Peter Jackson's first three Lord of the Rings movies. Mm. Why don't we talk a lot about them? Because they're perfect. They're perfect. <laughs> there's nothing, there's nothing to say. They're perfect. They, they, not only are they, they were released well. It was one every Christmas, it was like a Christmas present. You knew you were going to be there day one with a whole bunch of other fans. You're going to celebrate together. And it was three in a row and it knocked it out of the park. The first one was the perfect build, the, mm-hmm. the world building, the, the score is so incredible. And then two towers uh, and then return of the, it yeah. was just, it was great. Those three movies, they hold up in the extended editions, which I happen to have on Blu-ray. Yes. Um, they, they hold up. It's something you can just put on and it's like, I I don't know. It's like comfort food in the form of a movie. Right. So we don't rant on and on and talk about the Lord of the Rings films because why very satisfying experience. Now I do have friends who are fans of the novels, which I am not, I'm not, not only am I not a fan of the novels because I haven't read them, the Tolkien, which one day I may get around to doing that. Um, I don't even like that kind of genre. I don't like sword and sandal fantasy. I don't like uh, elves and wizards or any of that stuff. Having said that, I love the Harry Potter series. Uh, I love the Lord of the Rings films. Mm-hmm. I liked Game of Thrones, but I wasn't as invested as other people yeah. were in Game of Thrones. So when it shit the bed at the end, I didn't really care because it wasn't my thing and I'd never read the book. So, you All know, right. you, you've uh, ignited the chat once again. Have I ignited the chat? Do we have to go yeah. to the chat? And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we do. Tony <laughs> Gidley says, watch the Filoni episode. I- I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. Uh, we'll get there eventually. Testing. They literally leave nothing to the imagination. They go, J.J. Abrams is one trick pony and should finally start to find his artistic voice behind lens flares. And even <laughs> lens flares are actually a Michael Bay attribute. Yeah. Uh, Scott Slaughterbeck says, uh, Chris is right on. The mouse is just a corporate money machine. No soul. I agree. Yeah. I think the reason, like, I, I feel like Disney is where franchises go to die. You know, it's like I mean, I feel like this is true of all the corporations: Universal, Warner Brothers, Sony. Uh, Sony's probably got the best chance of pulling things out and giving us good content, but you know, Warner Brothers is just all over the place when it comes to DCEU. Um, and, you know, and it's it's kind of hit or miss. You know, fortunately, they've been hitting lately. So, uh, at least in movies, TV, they've been kind of sucking balls. So. Well, I feel I feel like the reason we keep coming back to talking about Star Wars is it's a form of therapy. Yeah, it's a form of therapy in the sense that, um, in the in the sense that we need to talk about it. We yeah. need to talk about it. Well, I, I think it crystallizes what we want in stories. You know, right. when you see how they screwed it up. You know, we talk about wokeness. Uh, it, it's the issue is not the color of the people on screen. The issue is. Are you telling a good story or are you forcing an idea down our throats and and using our favorite genres and our favorite franchises to to you know to lecture us? And I think that's the problem we have with with the way movies are going nowadays. Well, I think it's the the wokeness has to do with a generation of children who have been, you know, uh, who who are instilled with just bad ideas. So Mm -hmm. it really is this sort of this generation of kids that I think are going to look back on themselves and who they were when they were kids and think that they're idiots. Just like I look back at the younger version of myself and I think, what a moron you were. And also those mom jeans you were wearing in the 90s, (laughs) like an idiot gore. So I my 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 feeling is that this generation is going to look back and say, wow, I look like we do (laughs) I dressed that way and thought that way. And that's that's part of growing up. That's part of growing up. The problem is the adults that listen to these kids with bad ideas and the adults, what I mean is the studio executives Mm -hmm. who look at their assistant for approval about how they should be handling their big franchises when they should be looking at fandom. 
that's yep. that's where it needs to go. So I want to get through um, some of these comments here because I really appreciate your participation. We also appreciate your your super chats. If you feel we've earned it, throw us a super chat. You know what? Also, I support support us. Buy buy a film threat t shirt. You can get this one inspired by inspired by Fight Club. Go to shop.filmthreat.com. We appreciate. It. I'm wearing a. It's I don't know. It's cold in my little YouTube recording room. Yeah, it's here. warming up over here. So. Oh, okay, good, good. Well, th there you go. But uh, yeah, it's it's. JJ Max says, I watched that and agreed, um, especially your point about Spock dying. Yes, mm -hmm. Spock's death. It's one of the greatest deaths in movie history because it's this iconic character that that you know from this that was created by Leonard Nimoy in the '60s. It's the buildup of all those episodes of Star Trek. Star Trek, the motion picture and them reuniting, reuniting. Right. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I can't believe that that wasn't well thought through that. Not only do you not reunite Han, Luke and Leia, but then you, you create a death that you could see it coming. There's all the tension. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, we've all heard the rumors on soul is going to die. Okay. He died in front of a bunch of people. We don't care about cause we just met them mm -hmm. with the exception of Chewbacca. Right. So um, the it says uh, Chris on Film Courage are must sees. I'm actually doing another round of interviews with Film Courage and I sent them over some some topics. They're going to be very controversial. That's all I'll say. <laughs> so um, I'll be doing another round of Film Courage. What's weird. The people who do Film Courage. Brilliant. David and Karen, who run that uh, YouTube channel, strongly recommend it. Go over and check that out. Um, great people. And if you are an aspiring filmmaker. If you're an aspiring filmmaker, Film Courage is your channel, along with, uh, along with, along with Film, film Threat, Film Threat for sure. Um, I'm gonna go to more of these questions here. Um, Loom TV, Chris, do you have any insider knowledge about the behind the scenes of Rogue One? I love Gareth Edwards, but there are a lot of theories out there that he wasn't able to do his own thing. Well, one, it's Lucasfilm. <laughs> of course, he wasn't able to do his one thing, his own thing. I think that's I think that's a given. Um, I do know Gary Witta. I've known Gary Witta for years. He is the uh, screenwriter of the original script that was shot. You know where there was all this footage that was in the first trailer for Rogue One, and then none of that footage was used in the movie. So when you saw the movie, you're like, what is this movie? They did extensive reshoots. They did extensive reshoots on Solo. Fired that original director team. I mean, Gareth Edwards kind of just sort of stood around and like, okay, well, I guess you're going to, you know, mess with my original vision for the movie. Fine. Who did but, you interview? Um, the, you interviewed the other director that was fired off of. Oh, I don't, uh, I don't remember. Uh, I want to say uh, Simon Kinberg, but it was. No, yeah. no, I didn't. I'm not sure about that, but, but, you know, yeah. Solo had similar problems. Um, people forget Josh Trank. Josh Trank was supposed to do a Boba Fett movie. And my oh, guess that's the one. That's the one. Yeah, Josh Trank, um, who I know, just we just follow each other on social media. It's not like we're friends. Um, people like to use that term friend a lot in the entertainment industry. You know, the we're friends are the friends. ones, <laughs> friends are the ones that'll, that'll help me move and then I'll buy them pizza and beer after. Or friends are one are the ones that will just sort of hang out and go to movies together. People you know in the entertainment industry, they just say I'm friends with. And you just know that they're acquaintances. That's mm -hmm. more than, but, but I, I do know Josh Trank. He was originally supposed to do a Boba Fett movie for Lucasfilm. It was one of the announced when they announced Rogue One. I was at the Star Wars celebration where Gareth Edwards came out and gave a presentation about Rogue One. It was really nothing. They just showed this teaser trailer mm -hmm. and Josh Trank was additionally supposed to do a presentation about his un as you know, untitled, Boba Fett movie. It was rumored to be Boba Fett. My guess is that development wasn't wasted. It was used in The Mandalorian. It was just changed to The Mandalorian. Um, but he supposedly quit just before that. That That's when he was having all these problems with the Fantastic Four movie, which they drastically cut down the budget and special effects for that. Um, uh, you know, I happen to know that there were much more ambitious plans for what the new Fantastic Four was supposed to be that were dramatically cut back. And my feeling is there are a lot of behind the scenes reasons for that. So, you know, uh, but yeah I, yeah, I don't have any direct knowledge, but even what we know publicly is that Lucasfilm has a problem with directors and 
that's just the way it is, right? Like, I feel like you kind of want to, you know, you got to, and also if you know about Colin, Colin Trevorrow's uh, script for Duel of the Fates, which was supposed to be episode nine, you can find that script online. Read Duel of the Fates. He at least tried to repair, it seems like each movie was trying to just like, you know, repair, yeah. repair the damage done by the previous movie and by Rise of Skywalker was just too late. But I have no idea why they didn't make that movie. It would have been much better than what J.J. Abrams was doing. I have no idea exactly what. I mean, you can you can come up with your own theories, but um, why does this company have so many problems with filmmakers? Mm -hmm. It seems like a miserable place to work. Uh, I will so say you you did interview Josh Trank on this channel, the Film Threat YouTube channel. Um, yes. You didn't talk about Star Wars, but you did talk about Fantastic Four. We did and talk it's about a really good. In, it's a really good interview, and it, it's worth watching. Yeah, it was about his Capone uh, movie. Yeah, Capone film. Yeah, so, with Tom Hardy. Yeah, with Tom Hardy. Yeah, so so Josh Trank then did his Capone movie, which um, he talks about in the interview. You can see it on the Film Threat YouTube channel. Just look up Josh Trank on the Film Threat YouTube channel. But I interviewed him and. He said that basically the Capone movie was like therapy yeah. for everything that he went through because he was such a miserable. The Fantastic Four was a miserable experience. You know, the fallout from Lucasfilm, he just like he was attacked online for, you know, making the Fantastic Four. He was just savaged on social media for really no reason. I mean, he's he's and then he came out that like, you know, right before the Fantastic Four came out, there was a quote. I believe it was a tweet that he deleted where he talks about like that the version of the fantastic four that if they had let me make it would have been great that's all he that's all he said and you know he kind of got shit for that too i don't know i can't stand social media so um loom tv says seems there was a lot different footage in the trailers compared to the final film talking about rogue one that yeah, is that true. Happens a lot that we discussed lot. that um Roland Coleman's retrospective on the star trek movies on youtube did a great job on spock dying uh i haven't seen it but i i like the recommendation scott also says i will spread the word about film threat because i like ft yes absolutely and get yourself a film threat t-shirt because you know otherwise and this is the thing i don't like to brag about our t-shirts film threat t-shirts cure nudity on contact 100 percent guarantee i'm just gonna leave it at that <laughs> um Anyways, uh, Geek Truth sixty four says it wasn't just that Han died; it was that they registered, regressed his character back to where he was before New Hope and made him a deadbeat dad. Yeah, he he was in a space divorce with uh, Princess Leia or General Leia or Commander Leia or whatever. Yeah, it just like it's sort of like it was terrible because it was like you'd think he would have grown just more wise, you know, uh, you know. There is, there is, I mean, look, there are moments in all the Star Wars sequels where you're like, okay, that's kind of a cool moment, right? Or a cool action scene. I mean, you know, it doesn't work, but there are moments that are worthwhile. And one of them is is Han sort of giving the reverse of his speech from A New Hope, where, where he's just like, you know, that's just a bunch of nonsense. And he says, no, it's true, all of it. Like, that showed some growth, but that's like the only thing. See, that should have been the sequels. That entire story. They, yeah, they, it should have been like... They jumped you know, over the greatest drama that could have happened. And I mean, like, look, the sequel, the Star Wars sequels are a missed opportunity. A huge missed opportunity, which is going to be the name of the clip that you're going to put out, Alan, when you post okay. this as a standalone video. Star Wars sequel. The <laughs> biggest oh, the missed, Beatles? <laughs> the biggest missed opportunity. Well, you could probably cut them up into... Yeah, that. I could the cut The biggest them. missed opportunity in the history of movies is the Star Wars sequels. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Dungeon Questing says, that was the saddest thing. All of that character development from the original trilogy was wiped away. Yeah, no, it's 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 just frustrating. Mm -hmm. It's it's like why we're still talking about it. Geek Truth 64, Han's death did nothing for his story. It actually destroyed his entire story, and I would argue his legacy. They killed him in service of Kylo Ren's story, but that never paid off. So even that was a waste. Yeah, that's sort of like weird... Was it a dream sequence? Was he a force ghost? No, it was like, was this sort of a fever dream, a fever Jedi dream in Kylo's head that he has a reconciliation with his dad? You know, if you're going to do that in the first movie, you better know how you're going to resolve it. And I don't think, I feel like there was no redemption. I feel like uh, it, it did, it did, it, it just, it just didn't, it just didn't work.
at the same time, you know, I feel like Harrison Ford only agreed to do that movie because they killed him, and that they only brought him back in the in the third one because of Carrie. And uh, right, right. But that's not to say that they couldn't have written his death better. But I think there was pressure to kill him. Period. Right. Well. Yeah. 